And we're live with another episode of Noah Talks. I'm Noah. I'm talking. Best part of my day. I love it. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. It's always a pleasure to share what's on my mind, especially with people that are interested in clearly my thoughts about what is going on, why it's going on, how it's going on, and how do we make sure that we are part of what is going on. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely joyful. Let's do this. We are here today, not sponsored by Kyber Network. The good portion of this entire video today will be talking about Kyber and what is going on. I got a couple comments going up in the stream. We're going to start with them. Lewis is in the house. Naked Eye 2010. D Hero, what's up? Andy, my man. Lewis wants to know where to get S and X. Change Angel or One Inch? So, Chain Angel is a good deal, it's a non custodial uh, uh, on ramp. Um, and one inch is a DEX, a decentralized exchange which has no centralized authority. It is pure software using Ethereum smart contracts. Uh, my recommendation is to have a little bit of experience with both. There's no reason you can't use Chain Angel. It's great tech. They provide access to countless assets. A bit of a technological thing to get accustomed to, to use one inch exchange. I've covered one inch exchange in my previous videos. Nowadays, you have Maka.xyz as well, which is really cool. Automates the entire DEX process. Um, more behind the scenes with Maka. Uh, things, even if you're not going to get into a position, it's important to at least throw around 0.001F or tiny fractions of value to get a sense of the technology that these folks are building. Why is this important? Because this is some crazy stuff that they are building. That we need to see it and experience it to really understand how profound it is uh, as a technology and uh, the impact it could have at the societal level. Um, I'm not going to speak towards synthetics uh, much in this video. Uh, it its price is up huge. Clearly, it was a uh, my entry point was 75 cents. I think the last time I checked this morning, it was running around at two dollars and forty cents. So these are important considerations. Uh, I could dedicate an entire video to looking at the graph, trying to assess whether a meaningful pullback is in, is possible. I, I, I just, um, it's a complicated topic, entry points, when to get in, when to, uh, how do you identify a floor? How do you identify how much of up, uh, up, upward room there is for movement uh, these are very complicated in many regards this is risk versus reward this is faith leaps of faith and, and uh, but we we don't want just pure faith we want to um uh, use logic and reason and a little bit of uh, uh, analysis of data which is the technicals which is the charts but um it is investments. As I always say, focus on recurring revenue streams and not one-time gains. That's not the win that we're looking for. Uh, let's see if there's any good questions. Did he buy to just nibble? My man in the house. Argo Glass. Always enlightening. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Uh, Naked Eye. What often overlooked things should one take into consideration when choosing a pool to stake uh, their tiger token ta kyber tokens with so uh you're looking for impermanent losses now obviously uh, balancers crazy unisops crazy uh these are it's wonderful and kyber's about to be uh, a rocket ship just taking off but i like the the impermanent losses are a reality um, Bancor V2 is going to be launched likely this month. At least that's what they've said. I don't care whether it takes them to August, September. Uh, the tech that they are trying to release is, will alleviate impermanent losses, and that's absolutely meaningful. Impermanent losses is when you have uh, Kyber and Ethereum in a pool. And let's say a huge amount of Kyber is purchased, and then there's a massive Ethereum run. But the pool is weighted towards Kyber, so you're going to miss out on this entire price movement in Ethereum, and that is called an impermanent loss. Uh, Bancor V2, uh, their tech is purporting to uh, deal with that reality. Uh, the, the other way to deal with that reality is Curve.fi, because the assets are of equivalent value. So it doesn't matter what the balance of the pool is, they're of equivalent value. 
there's no such thing as impermanent loss. If anything, it's real, microscopic and likely trivial at best. So Kyber's a good deal to avoid impermanent loss. Bancor V2 is exciting. And just Kyber, Uniswap, Balancer, these guys just got assets up the wazoo. Some phrase like that. It's just value piling in. There's so many assets on these pools. You, you can pretty much get whatever you want. And the appropriate place to get wherever you want is from an aggregator of these pools. One inch exchange, Maka XYZ, because they use liquidity from Uniswap, V1, V2, Kyber, Balancer, Curve, all accessible from one user interface, calculating the best rates possible with the least slippage that is achievable. D Hero, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my man uh, Lewis Berry technicals aside I appreciate the answer on SNX my man yes it's a pleasure anytime doesn't matter ask anything I don't care if I've gone over it 10,000 10, times that's what we're here for to make the best decisions possible David says could you go over how to rebalance SNX staking if at all needed yes um, so to, when you're minting SNX I don't want to digress too much. I want to talk about Kyber more. I got a bunch of screens ready to go at the top. But SNX is a 7.5 to 1 collateralization uh, ratio. So uh, if you have um, 750 SNX, you can mint 100 SUSD. So in order to claim weekly rewards, you have to maintain that 7.5 to one ratio uh, so if SNX goes down and you have a 750 percent collateralization position some shit like that uh, you will not be able to mend if it drops to 749 600 so I like to put the target at 800 850 probably 850 900 bear in mind as the price of SNX goes up your collateralization will increase as well which means your weekly rewards will also decrease so you're going to want to keep minting SUSD keeping the collateralization probably at about 850 I think is a safe target for a little bit of downward pressure on the SNX value james is in the house what's up he says smash the likes i tend to agree good stuff andy says third party kyber pools like yes uh, i'm getting to this uh so stake with us uh, DeFi dudes yes DeFi dads yes uh that is a uh, third screen uh, up here at the top I just want this is obviously my feed Lewis likes the new graphics I'm trying not a graphics designer but this OBS software I could throw up some nice transparencies I got a green screen behind me I got an external GPU coming today which is going to improve the performance of the monitors and give me better FPS which is really cool um, First, uh, we'll take a look at the chart real quick. This is quite interesting. So I put a couple of tweets out last night about a rising wedge formation. A rising wedge formation tends to break downward. Uh, and we had a rising wedge all day yesterday. Um, and it broke to the upside, which is something that I, I actually took a bet. I think I threw a quick 15,000 Kyber and I wrote it from a uh, uh, fifty to a dollar eighty, so that was a nice little win. Now I don't trade often. I don't like the risk. It doesn't sit well with me. I like to sleep well at night and, and focus on recurring revenue streams, as I talk about often. But <clears throat> I think uh, what's at play here with Kyber, obviously, is a, a rising wedge that flipped to a, a bullish channel. And look how it's stuck to that bullish channel. Uh, you see in the last maybe half an hour at this stuff right here, I thought it was going to break down, but it's stuck to the channel. It's quite fascinating how technical analysis really is psychological. And it really it really gives a great deal of insight into uh, the, the overall psychology of all the people involved with a particular asset. And um, I see until the 7th of July, until uh, Catalyst releases, this is totally a buy the news, sell the event type scenario. This thing's going to run until the 7th, just like what happened with Ren mainnet release. It's going to run until the 7th. You're going to have a fat dump on the 7th, and then you're going to have a serious continuation. After mainnet release, it took, Ren took a fat dump, 
serious continuation, and then it just broke out to all-time highs. Uh, <laughs> here, let's take a look at some perspective here. I mean, let's look at the weekly. I mean, look at this on the weekly. It, here, check this out. Here's the chart on the short-term time frame, and then here's the chart when you look at the big picture. It looks tiny, the movement. Oh, can you imagine Kyber breaking out the all-time highs? We're talking... Two, two, almost 150, 200 more percent to go. That'd uh, be absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at the comments. Anything? Hit me up with anything if you have any questions about all the stuff that I'm covering. There's a lot of technical stuff, a lot of details. And it is exciting times. Look at this chart. Actually, absolutely. This is the, my focus right now, at least uh, uh, for the next, until the 7th of July. Um, is other stuff on my mind. I, I look forward to getting into like Polkadot and Cosmos and, and, and things of that nature. The, that's more of what James likes. Uh, it's the stuff that's off the radar that has the potential to go from like uh, micro mini cap to <laughs> ultra craziness. But for now, you, got, you can't spread too thin. You can't go all in. This is the hot shit on the table. This deserves the attention. And frankly, this is a recurring revenue stream, so that's the main focus of my portfolio anyway. So why the hell spend too much time on uh, on potential winners, you know, outside the scope winners, recurring revenue stream. So the Kyber launch goes live on the 7th, or was it 7 a.m.? They put a time in their Twitter post. But this is what's quite interesting. Uh, clearly read this article, just Google Kyber Catalyst launch, you're going to get the Medium article. Well, it's not even medium. This is the Kyber blog, but where is it? So you'll be. Able to, I'll get to uh, David's question about staking. So clearly staking, and you go to kyber.org on the seventh, and you'll have a variety of uh, likely recommendations. Or this is actually where you stake with Kyber. The pools aren't directly staking. The pools facilitate third-party governance where someone else is doing the voting for you. But if you go to kyber.org and you vote, you're going to get better staking rewards, but you have to actually dedicate the required time to do the voting. You have to perform the action and participate. And uh, that's the recommended way to do it. But these pools are quite cool. Uh, and one of them in particular, which I'm going to talk about, where is what I wanted to show you? No, not the staking. Here we go. So when uh, Kyber Catalyst goes live, this is this is what's going to drive the price of Kyber like just to a whole other level. 65% will go to staking rewards. So when you stake, 65% of transaction fees, all transaction fees go to the stakers. That is going to incentivize staking, and when you are staking, you're locking up supply. So that is supply shock. That is extreme deflationary pressure, which is something that occurs with synthetics, and we see what synthetics is doing. 30% to reserve rebates for uh, – so reserve rebates are uh, incentivized liquidity. It encourages the liquidity providers to, to market, to facilitate integrations, and to lock, provide more liquidity. And that's basically that percentage. And 5% is used for burning Kyber tokens. So Kyber is, is currently a deflationary asset. And after this upgrade, with the incentivized staking and the supply shock, this is an extremely deflationary asset. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Deflation. Deflation drives valuation. Appreciation. Yes. What do you got? A couple comments. Alex says, what's up? Yes. Uh, third party Kyber pools. I hit them. I'm going to talk about the decentralized one next, which is really cool. Uh, James wants that 7,000. Yeah, Kyber might be it. <laughs> so Lend smashed it. Lend is a governance token. Comp is a governance token. Bow is a governance token. The CRV token, when Curve releases it, will be a governance token. Kyber is a governance token that's already completely available and distributed and and it's a deflationary governance token 
there's going to be serious supply shock when the staking goes live. People are going to be locking up Kyber, which means less Kyber is on the markets available for trading. Supply restriction, equivalent if not increasing demand, put the pieces together to what may and likely happen. Ooh, yeah, so James says, I'm so scared, but so prepared to go hard to low cap. Listen, risk reward. I don't take risk. I minimize the crap out of my risk. I got a house, mortgage, family, kids. I have no interest in risk. So bear in mind, if you're younger and you don't have um, those responsibilities as such, that's the time to take such risks. Um but you always have to consider risk versus reward. And now I've worked really hard for what I've accumulated value-wise. So my risk tolerance is basically zero. I want to preserve my value and grow it via yield producing assets. I barely trade, rarely trade. It was a nice trade last night. That was a quick $2,000, but I don't do that. I don't like that. I, I don't, it doesn't feel right. It's not responsible considering my obligations and responsibilities to take risks. So that is why I talk about recurring revenue streams quite often. And uh, that's why uh, what I encourage it. It is a minimized risk uh, f way to produce for your value to work for you. Because you don't want to work. I want my value that I've worked my ass off for to work for me so I could do what I want to do with my time. Like start building some Digibyte apps. I want to code. Anyway, five minutes of venting. <laughs> Back to the show. Uh, so staking Kyber. <laughs> Uh, this is cool. This X token is a big deal. So this is a, a, a DeFi, uh, a smart contract implementation that's going to decentralize the staking process. Uh, let's keep it simple. Is the XKNC asset. So XKNC A, when you own it, you get the staking rewards for your Kyber staking position, and it will always vote to increase stakers' fees. X, K, and C, B will always vote to increase the reserve rebates. Staking fees will encourage more staking, which will increase the deflationary pressure. Uh, reserve rebates encourage liquidity providers to market and uh, pursue more integrations, which increases volume, more volume, more fees. <laughs> and you can see how all three of these components play into uh, a, a strong, uh, appreciative uh, and uh, uh, explosive pressure. So XKNCA, XKNCB, it's called X token. Uh, find them on Twitter and follow this. This is quite interesting. Albeit, uh, as you said, uh, David, uh, uh, what were the other? Uh, Andy said, uh, 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 stake with us and uh, DeFi Dad's pool. Yeah, I mean, consider them, but you could also go to kyberdow.org and you just do the staking yourself and then you're you're getting 100%. I believe DeFi Dad said the stakers get 100%. Uh, but, you know, it's cool to actually participate if, uh, if you actually make that choice. Um, I mean, check this out. The big picture. So as, as I always talk about the specifics of stuff you have to remember the big picture because that is how you put these specific things that are going on into perspective there's 1.77 billion locked up in the DeFi ecosystem this is a billion dollars probably less than a month ago at this point um uh, the last time I checked, uh, Ren is actually about number nine. Ren is number nine. It has about $25 million locked in it between the Ren bonds and uh, the, the pretty much the Bitcoin uh, un, AUM, big, a, assets under management currently. So it's about number nine. Um, DYDX, it, it, it's uh, nipping at the heels of DYDX. Absolutely crazy. Uh, this was the, one of the most profound flips in a long time, maker versus compound. Compound with that comp token. Incentivize liquidity. And that is exactly what Kyber is about to unleash. Curve with its no and permanent losses. And when they release that Curve token, Curve is going to be absolute fire. Look at Curve. Take a peek at this. So Curve... Let's scroll it down. Here's the monthly. You got to see this. This is crazy. Um, in January, it wasn't on the radar. 
March. It started peaking. I mean, Uniswap's always been big. But look what happens in uh, pretty much last month. Look at this volume. I mean, it's pretty much nipping at the heels of Uniswap. Going from May to June. In May, it was 37 mil. June, 360. You're talking about a 1,000% increase in volume month over month. Absolutely crazy. And they still don't even have the uh, incentivized liquidity, the CRV token yet. But obviously the assets, the big reason uh, there is technically incentivized liquidity on Curve because they have partnerships with Synthetics and REN currently, uh, which is quite meaningful. You get Synthetics rewards for uh, participating in the SUSD pool. You get Synthetics, REN, Curve, and BOW rewards for participating in the SBTC pool. <laughs> <laughs> incentivized liquidity is about to ex just just trigger such a massive inflow of value why because it facilitates the search for yield and uh, what happens in the real world you got different assets that produce different yields and the yield value yield produced is always fluctuating so what is constantly happening in the, in the legacy financial system people are hopping from yield producing assets to another they're constantly rebalancing portfolios uh, especially with carry trades where you actually have to make sure your lending your your borrowing rates are cheaper than your lending rates so you're always in a profit balance um there's always constant rebalancing and what we're starting to see i mean comp just lit a fire under this entire process but we're starting to see is this process emerge in the DeFi space where the carry trade is just possible and lending by anyone is possible and borrowing by anyone is possible and this is exactly what banks do you put money in a bank they give someone a mortgage the bank gets interest and we get jack shit for giving the bank the money to do it we are able to put money into compound, put money into Aave, put money into liquidity pools, and get 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%, 100% on, on some of the liquidity pools. And this, this is brand new. It makes a bank meaningless. Aave and compound make a bank meaningless. There is no reason to keep... 100% of dollars in a bank account when you could convert dollars to die, which are relatively equivalent to dollars. I mean, theoretically, you can convert them to USDC and have a little bit more stability because that's a one-to-one -one backed asset versus dollars, whereas die is a programmatic stable coin. And you're going to get probably 4 to 8% at any given time between DAI and USDC, the rates on Aave. There's rates on DYDX for DAI uh, to uh, handle the leverage positions. Um, and obviously Compound with its incentivized comp token for DAI positions. Oh, and it's not even like I'm just getting started. I've been talking about this shit for a long time now. The, it just doesn't stop, and the analysis doesn't stop, and trying to comprehend the scope and potential of this stuff just doesn't stop. Um, Fran says, you think Kyber will drop a lot after the 7th? So look what happened with Ren. It was a run-up until Mainnet. Mainnet took a big fat dump, and then there was a continuation, and then there was a straight-up breakout past all-time high. So... Um, if hi history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, as folks say, uh, so that is a reasonable sequence of events to play out. Uh, you know, you grab a position now. You're probably going to want to sell. You know, uh, uh, June, uh, January, uh, July sixth at 12 p.m. <laughs> uh, anticipating. Uh, being prepared for a dump, and then you grab another position. Frankly, I don't care. I'm, I, I've established my position. I don't like to buy and sell. I know the long-term value proposition for Kyber. Um, my play that I did yesterday, I don't do it. I don't buy and sell. I, I've had a nice position for months now, and I saw... I saw this rising wedge, and I just had a, a feeling, and that's really what trading is. I had a feeling it was going to break to the upside, particularly because we're in buy the news, sell the event mode. So it, it broke to the upside, and that was a fat 30 cents on about 15,000 Kyber. That, that was a nice little win. Uh, I since exited that position, and I, I don't do that. That's not me. I don't like that. You know, you win, but more more, more often than not, it's a losing 
it's 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 something just risk versus reward i definitely don't recommend it <laughs> uh did you buy just now but would you buy more kyber now or wait for a retrace i have my position my position has been set since 70 cents uh james this is why i was laughing i hope kyber drops <laughs> my man oh it's uh there's no specific thing i could say i hope uh, the asset is utilized for its functionality i hope it does what it's designed to do and if it does what it's designed to do i think uh, this thing could potentially disrupt the legacy financial system obviously in combination with the other projects that are out there this is a key participant to the entire DeFi space kyber is positioned it's positioning itself to be a focal point, a nexus of liquidity availability. And that is what is most meaningful about Kyber as compared to the other liquidity providers. It is much more of a network, much more of a, a, a stream provider or uh, an aggregator. Uh, not in the aggregator sense of like one inch and, um, and Maka, uh, but uh, uh, absolutely one heck of a position. Check this out. Do I have it up? Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's my next one on the list. <laughs> this is the full list of integrations with uh, with Kyber. Um, it is massive. It was at 42, 42 for to for token swaps. Payments, 22. Decentralized finance, 20. And this is direct wallet integrations. Coinbase. Uh, Kyber Network is supported on the popular Coinbase.com and Coinbase Pro Cryptocurrency Exchange, as well as in the Coinbase Android and iOS apps. How do you like that? Kyber facilitates. How do you like that? I don't know what to, to what extent, because obviously Coinbase provides trading, but Kyber is decentralized trading vis-a-vis -vis liquidity pools. Huh. How do you like them, Apple's Argent? Well-known. Well-known smart contract wallet. Ah, the HTC Exodus, a dedicated hardware. Oh, HTC. Oh, oh, nostalgia. That was one of my first Android devices that I started my career with. But look at them staying around with... This is probably a beautiful piece of hardware. Anyway, what do we got? A couple more questions. We got three minutes. Best use of ETH rewards from Kyber DAO. Uh, if, well, Ethereum is good to accumulate. I think it's a great position to have. Um, you need Ethereum for gas, and everyone needs Ethereum for gas. And uh, who knows what and how long it's going to take for F2.0 or second layer solutions to play out. So there's a constant demand for Ethereum merely to process transactions. Ethereum has great potential to be worth a huge amount of money. Obviously, it's a relatively expensive asset, but there's no reason Ethereum can't be a thousand, two, three, four, five thousand dollars. Especially if Bitcoin is going to thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars. And um, this is when the DeFi space is going to ten billion, a hundred billion dollars. Um, the money print to go burr. Anything's possible. <laughs> So uh, bear in mind, with Ethereum, uh, well, with F staking, 32F, with F2.0, you have a, a returning revenue stream. But I like the notion more so of yield from trading fees, which is why Kyber really piques my interest more than Ethereum staking. Lewis says, don't trade. Keep cash for KNC pullbacks and add to your position. My opinion, uh, which is probably not, yes, it is worth a lot. My friend, that is a great statement. Um, now, well, you can, people can trade. There's no reason not to uh, consider trading, but you can lose money. And it's not just losing money for uh, with the depreciation of an asset, like the asset goes down in value. You're losing money because you bought it high and you sold it low. And, and that's why trading is a pain in the ass. It requires a certain degree of expertise, skill, and experience. So I've lost a fair amount of the money trading, but... Uh, this is why I don't trade often, unless it's like an obvious play. I, I really want my value to work for me. Uh, accumulate. You're accumulating yield-bearing assets. If the, the, the real-world economy was actually functional, REITs would be my go-to. 
Would love to see a tutorial on BlockNet. At, yes, uh, Franz, he mentioned that the other day on Twitter, and I like that. Uh, you know, obviously, I have a, I have a service node, I have a, a StakeNet uh, master node, um, and uh, you know, I have a, I have a bunch of nodes. You probably see them in the top right corner every now and then, popping off uh, the the rewards. Um, and uh, I could go through a terminal. And show you the various commands, how to build uh, the daemons, and uh, you know, it's stuff that I could show. Lewis says, Peace out. Happy Fourth, everyone. Be safe. Noah for press. Thank you, Lewis. It's always a pleasure. Love having you guys on. This is an absolute joy for me every day. I think we're going to have a weekend special tomorrow. It's probably going to be an Ask Me Anything, unless I find some specific content. But in any regards, happy Fourth of July. If I catch you on the Fourth, sounds good. If we wait till Monday, it's all good. Wish you all a safe and wonderful weekend. I will see you all soon. Peace.